which the next part of this unit is naming covalent compounds. And this is actually really not that hard. If you were like, oh my gosh, I feel like it was really hard to name ionic compounds because there's Roman numerals, there's polyatomic ions, there was charging and there was crisscrossing. All of those things were just kind of crazy. Naming covalent compounds is significantly easier, okay? First rule of naming covalent compounds is you write the name of the element as it comes directly off the periodic table. So the first element, you just write that name. Second element, you write that name also, but you drop the ending and change it to IDE. And then the last thing you do is you use a prefix or a set of prefixes to explain how many of each element are present. So the prefixes that we need to talk about here are these. So if there's one element present, uh, or one atom of that element present, it would be mono. Duh! Good call. If there's one element of that atom present, it would be mono. If there's two elements of that element present, or if there's two atoms of that element present, it would be di. If there's three atoms of that element present, it would be tri. If there's four atoms of that element present, it would be tetra. Tetra, like tetris. If there's five elements of that atom present, it would be penta. And if there's six atoms of that element present, it would be hexa. So my guess, so my guess is you might be familiar with with mono and maybe tri and probably penta and probably hexa. And you're like, oh, di, I guess that makes sense because when in the summertime I ride my dicycle. But tetra is the weird one. You don't ride a dicycle? Oh. Oh. Anywho, let's try this. So, here's the deal. NO2. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the name of the first element, which happens to be nitrogen. I'm going to write the name of the second element, which happens to be oxygen. That's the first rule. I just write the elements off the periodic table. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the ending of the second one to IDE. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add prefixes to indicate how many elements are present, okay? Nitrogen is the first element, and the first element, if there's only one of them, only gets, it, it doesn't get a prefix. So I'm just going to leave that one alone. Oxygen, the second element in a covalent compound, always gets a prefix no matter what. And the prefix for two atoms of oxygen is di. So if I clean this up, this becomes... Nitrogen, di, oxide. Okay. Trying the next one. I have nitrogen and oxygen. So I'm going to write nitrogen. And I'm going to write oxygen. I'm going to change oxygen to IDE. And I'm going to start applying prefixes. In this case, there are two nitrogens, so I need a prefix for that first one. So it's going to be dinitrogen. And in the case of the second one, there's only one, and the second element always gets a prefix no matter what. So it's going to be monoxide. But that just sounds silly. So the rule of thumb is if there's two vowels next to each other that are the same when you add a prefix, you drop one vowel. I actually don't care what you do as long as you have the appropriate prefix present. But when I clean this up, it's going to be dinitrogen. Monoxide. Dinitrogen monoxide. Why don't you give the next one a shot? You give the next one the old GHS try. Ready, set, try. 
So hopefully you identified the fact there are two phosphoruses, five fluorines, so it became diphosphorus pentafluoride, IDE. All right, you guys technically don't have ClF3 in your notes, but I just can't leave it. That makes me feel itchy if I leave it, so I'm going to deal I'm going to deal with it. So, in the case of the first one, we have chlorine. We have fluorine. I'm going to change the INE to IDE. I have one chlorine, so I don't need to do anything with that, but I've got three fluorines, so that's going to become tri. So when I clean this up, it's going to become chlorine tri fluoride not too bad hopefully okie dokie so now you're going to be asked to look at a name and write the chemical formula and basically you just do the exact opposite of what you just did so you take you take what the prefix says and you make that a subscript behind that element and we don't reduce ratios in this case so here I'm looking at the first one, which I realize is not what you have. I found that out the hard way. You have dinitrogen monoxide, is that correct? Yeah. So I'll, I'll do that one up the top here. So it's di... All right, so let's, let's dissect this a little bit. I see there's a prefix of di that means two. My nonmetal is nitrogen. There's a prefix of mono which means one, the root word of ox is ox, or oxygen is ox, and then we have IDE. So I know that I'm gonna have a nitrogen and an oxygen, and I have two nitrogens and one oxygen, but we don't write ones in chemistry. So we end up with N2O. And because you don't have this one, but I do, I got to do it, so I'm going to do it, okay? I have di, which means two. Hydrogen is my element, is my nonmetal. Mono means one. Ox is my root word for oxygen, and IDE is my ending, okay? So I'm going to do this. H, O, and it's going to be like a two and a one, but we don't write ones, right? So we end up with... H2O. So the fancy name for water is dihydrogen monoxide. So if you want to be fancy tonight when you get to the house, you can say to whoever your adult is, please pour me a glass of purified dihydrogen monoxide. And your parent will look at you like, what is your problem? And you'll be like, excuse me, I expect nothing but the best, most pure dihydrogen monoxide in this house. And you'll probably get slapped. At least I would. So, anywho, let us do the next one. Phosphorus hexachloride. So there's no prefix, so that tells me something. Then I have hexa, which means six. And then I have chloro, which is the root word, and then IDE. So I know that I'm going to have phosphorus, which is P, and chlorine, or chlor yeah, chlorine, which is Cl. And I have one phosphorus and six chlorines. So when I clean this up, it's going to become PCl6 because I don't write the ones. Last one. Here we go. Carbon. There's no prefix in front of that, so I've just got one of those. Um, di tells me it's a prefix of two. Ox is oxygen and IDE is my ending that got changed, right? So I'm simply going to have CO and it's probably going to be C1O2, but because we don't write ones, it's going to become CO2, which is your carbon dioxide. So that's formula writing and naming with covalent compounds. All right.